thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I'll uh, aim to do a great deal better than uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, it's a great pleasure to follow the uh, Honourable Member for Oldham, East and Saddleworth's um, very thoughtful speech. Um, I welcome this bill and, of course, will be delighted to support it later on this evening. Um, but I want to, in particular, talk about the second part of this bill, the part of the bill relating to claims management companies. And the reason I take an interest in claims management companies is that a few years ago, uh, my wife and I were involved in a very minor road traffic accident. I think it was on the M5, uh, heading to Cornwall on a family holiday. And uh, for the year or so, following this very minor bump, uh, I was plagued with phone calls to my mobile phone on an almost weekly basis by one of these claims management companies. Goodness knows how they got my mobile phone number. And in each of these phone calls, they essentially tried to persuade me to submit a fraudulent uh, claim for whiplash. And no matter how persistently I told them that I suffered absolutely no injury, my family suffered no injury, we didn't have even the slightest ache or pain, uh, they, they said things like, well, if you just tell, tell us your neck hurts a bit, we'll get you £3,000. Um, and uh, this, this went on for about a year. Um, it was extremely persistent. And I can imagine if somebody you know, was a bit short of cash, they might um, succumb to these kind of blandishments. So, I made it uh, something I want, a topic I wanted to get involved in after being elected. I've raised it several times in Westminster Hall debates, and I'm delighted to be able to raise it again today. The number of uh, claims for ro essentially whiplash accidents, minor road traffic accident, uh, soft tissue injuries, um, has gone up in the last few years by an astonishing um, 50 per cent, at the same time that road traffic accidents have gone down by 30 per cent. So the number of accidents leading to a claim have gone up stratospherically. And if you compare the number of claims in this country to equivalent European countries like France or Germany, um, you will see that we have just far more claims in this country than we do in those other European countries. And we very recently, as the um, Honourable Member for Oldham East and Saddleworth mentioned, we've had a similar phenomena which has recently started in relation to claims for gastric illness, tummy upsets, on holiday. Um, and Mr Deputy Speaker, I should uh, put on record or remind the House in my declaration of members' interest I have a shareholding um, in a small holiday business, um, <coughs> although not one that's had any significant problem in this area, um, I'm pleased to say. However, uh, since 2013, there has been a 568 per cent increase in claims for tummy upsets and there have been uh, following holidays and there have been some uh, notorious cases, for example, the case of Deborah Britton and Paul Roberts, um, who were sentenced to nine and 15 months respectively in prison by Liverpool Crown Court a short time ago because having, having rather foolishly tweeted and put Facebook posts up saying how wonderful their holiday was, um, then tried to claim um, that their holiday had been ruined um, by gastric illness at the behest of some claims management company. Uh, and I'm afraid to say cases like that, where claims management companies have incited the public to essentially commit fraud, are becoming all too common. And my objection to the activities of these claims management companies are twofold. Firstly, they are inciting otherwise law-abiding members of the public to commit fraud, which I think is a uh, clearly morally corrosive phenomena. Um, but secondly, of course, um, the costs of all of these compensation payments are ultimately borne by drivers through higher insurance premia, um, estimated £2.5 billion extra uh, by some people, or by higher costs for holidays, um, as we've heard already. So it's the consumer, it's your constituents and mine, who end up bearing the costs of these um, activities. So I'm very pleased to hear this bill begins to take some steps to sort this out. Um, if you ask the question um, why this happens, it's because clearly there are enormous financial incentives for claims management companies to operate in this way, um, in particular under the concept of one-way cost shifting, whereby unusually uh, in these cases even if the defendant, so the holiday company or the car insurance company, um, successfully defends a case, they still nonetheless have to pay the claimant's legal costs. Now, those can often run, um, for a fully contested case, up to £10,000 or more, whereas settling the case often only, co only costs about sort of £3,000 or £4,000. So the, the insurer or the holiday company 
uh, sadly has a financial incentive to settle, and the claims management company, knowing that, uh, simply has to process the paperwork to collect um, really very high fees. So they're responding to a financial incentive, which unfortunately um, the current system has created. And the number of claims management companies has mushroomed uh, from 500 in 2006 up to 3,300 in 2011. I'm pleased to say measures taken already has reduced that to 1,500, but I think it still is far too high and there is definitely more we need to do. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, in terms of this particular bill before the House, I certainly welcome um, the uh, uh, transfer of oversight responsibilities to the Financial Conduct Authority. That is a very welcome measure. And I certainly welcome the introduction of fee caps in relation to claims management companies. Um, we need to be very careful that we draft those regulations to make sure they can't circumvent the cap. So, for example, I think the cap refers to 20 or 25 per cent of the net recovery. We need to make sure the claims management company can't somehow extract any portion of the recovery by way of sort of fixed charge levied up front. So we've got to be very careful about the detail of how we word that because these companies are very adept at circumventing government attempts to uh, restrict their activities. Thank you. And for giving way, he's making a powerful speech about uh, this very important issue. He will understand, I hope, how much we welcome the, uh, the bill on this side of the House, because in Scotland, up until now, there's been no protection whatsoever for consumers in the face of this onslaught of CM, uh, C, uh, uh, companies. Well, I thank the honourable member um, from Stirling for that point, and I'm shocked to learn that I'm shocked to learn that the uh, government in Scotland has been so slow to take action when the Westminster government has been so quick. Go on. He will, of course, understand that in this area, this is a reserved matter, and so the Scottish government has no locus to act. That's not true. Well, I, not- I, notice, I notice from a sedentary position the Honourable Member for Stirling uh, takes a different view, and no doubt if he speaks later in this debate he will elaborate that point. I happily give way. I thank the Member for this really powerful speech. In addition to um, the raising the cost of insurance for everybody else and encouraging people to incite fraud, does the Member agree with me that this cold calling can often cause huge amounts of distress? to the person on the other end of the phone who are reminded constantly about accidents that they may wish to forget. I think the Honourable Member for Chelmsford makes a very good point. I mean, even as someone who I I consider myself to be a fairly robust individual, the constant pestering by these companies was distressing. And if somebody is vulnerable in any way, I can imagine that it would be um, very, very distressing indeed, which in fact leads me on to my next point in relation to the cold call ban contemplated by Clause 4 of this Bill. Now, I strongly welcome the inclusion of this clause in the Bill, um, but the way that it's structured currently uh, invites the new, um, the new regulatory, the single uh, regulatory authority, uh, to make a recommendation to the Secretary of State, who then, by regulation, has power to act. But given the pressing nature of this problem, I just wonder if the Secretary of State might consider um, having a rather more direct route on the face of the bill. Uh, so the Secretary of State has power uh, to ban cold calling in this area immediately without needing to wait for a referral by the new regulatory authority. And I can see the Secretary of State is listening to the point. So if she could give that consideration, um, that might be an amendment um, that members on both sides of the House would welcome as this bill progresses um, through this House. Um, Now, I think there are other things which uh, we need to do that are probably beyond the scope of this bill, but nonetheless very important, Um, in particular in relation to the holiday claims. um, I know the government is currently consulting on the civil procedure rules that would bring overseas claims, uh, so holiday claims, into the scope of the fixed fee schedule. Uh, That would be an extremely welcome move, and I would just encourage um, the Ministry of Justice to expedite their response to that consultation, um, which is itself very welcome. Um, I had the pleasure of sitting uh, earlier uh, in 2017 on the Prisons and Courts Bill Committee, uh, the work of which was unfortunately, um, yeah, the, uh, I can see the Minister recalls that, uh, the work of that Bill Committee was unfortunately interrupted by the general election. I believe we pl- the Government plans to bring forward a civil liability bill in due course.